Hey everybody, Andy here. Career Coach Andy, helping you build a career you love. Great to have you from a live show, or if you're watching this on a recording, it's always great to have you any way you can make it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about resume writing. I've got some tips I want to share with you. I also want to take a lot of your questions, so this is really going to be resume focused. If you're here with me live, get in the chat, say hi, put some question marks in front of your questions. We're going after resume questions first. Let me know where you're watching from. Always love to know if you're in one of my programs, give me a hashtag. Let me know if you're a boot camper or a leader or if you're my resume program or anything else, maybe my interview intervention program. Let me say a quick hello then. Let's get right into it. Uh, let me see. What do we... Oop, I hit the wrong button there. Well, there we go. Uh, who's in the house? Steve, great to see you. Well, we got two Steves in a row. We got Adam from on the other side of the pond. Michael Tierney, I love my mainstays. Who else? Word Dog Toronto, my Canadian friend, Mo Heat, my leader, what's happening? Moving forward, T.A. Bragg, Danny Forbes, and everybody else, wherever you're watching from, great to have you. Okay, resume writing's tough. You know why resume writing's tough? Because it's about marketing. It's about sales. It's about human psychology. And if you're wondering how to put a resume together or why your resume isn't getting you more job interviews or more opportunities. I like to say, open up the door to the opportunities. It, it isn't the most vital part of your job search, but it is a pivotal part as it relates to creating intrigue, creating interest in you, getting somebody interested in wanting to talk to you. And the faster it can get somebody to that decision, the better your resume is. But a lot of people struggle with it because they try to describe themselves. They try to talk about the features they have. They try to talk about what it is that they can do. And most people that I know think that the resume is a work history document, right? Littered with all the things that you've done. And nothing could be further from the truth because the resume is a marketing vehicle to get you to where you want to go. It needs to be written to make a sale for the sale you want. And in your case, what that means is how do I get to where I want to go? Yes, I need to use information in my professional background and my education and my volunteer work and every other thing that I can think of that sells me best. The problem is most people don't know how to package that up into a marketable message. So I want to talk about four tips today to help you better understand how to do that. And then we'll 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 finish it out with a bunch of a bunch of your questions. So um, one of the things that I think is is really vital is certainly understanding how somebody uses a resume to determine if they want to to talk with you. And I want to take this talk today in the direction of assuming that somebody's actually looking at your resume. I don't even want to talk about the applicant trashing systems. Those are machines that are not really effective. They're not designed to help you get through. They're, decide, they're designed to filter you out. Let's not talk about that. Let's assume that some you're going to get eyeballs on your resume of someone's. And it would be helpful to understand what they're looking for, where they're looking for it, what words are going to resonate with them, what's going to entice them. And that'd be great. But even if you didn't know any of that, think for a minute about how is it that you, y'all, as a consumer, buy anything, right? Because that's what an employer is doing. They're looking to buy your, you and your services. So you are now the marketer of you. You're the seller of you. So think of yourself as a consumer. When you look at a product, right, and you're scrolling through your Instagram feed, or maybe now you're scrolling through your Threads feed. I'm on Threads. Go, go follow me there, and we can get connected and have a conversation there. That, that Twitter killer, I guess it's supposed to be. But when you're scrolling through your feed and you're looking at stuff and, 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 and you, see, you see that beautiful guy in the built body or you see that beautiful woman in the nice bikini or whatever it is, and you're thinking, I want to buy that product, right? What they're selling, that health program, that workout program, that whatever. You're, you're buying the transformation. You're not buying the 300 days in a row of working out and eating healthy and sleeping right, right? That's the grind. Those are, those are, those are the, the features of the product are the steps you need to take in order to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. But what did you buy? You bought the body, right? That's what you're buying. You're buying the transformation. Nobody 
And I mean, nobody buys features. They buy the transformation. Yes, nice features that are going to help me transform more easily are great, right? If it's, it's all nice and packaged and I, I don't have to spend a lot of time getting what I need or the tools I need or whatever it might be that are part of the features. But ultimately, people buy with emotion. They buy for the transformation. And what most job seekers do is they write a resume that's filled with features and it's boring and it's not enticing and it doesn't help me as an employer or any corporation that's looking to, to, to bring you in understand how their lives are going to change as a result of, of, of hiring you. And that's what your resume needs to do. So I'm going to give you four tips on how to start doing that. Obviously, it's going to be a quick talk. We're not going to, we're not going to go into every single bit and bite, but I, I, I picked out four of the biggest tips that I could give you that I think will give you the biggest bang for your buck in changing your work history document into a marketing document. The first is the career profile. Now, you don't need to worry about visualizing what this is because Kara has already put in the, in the chat or it'll be in the description of the recording uh, a download to my free resume template. The resume template shows you the exact layout. I even have instructions in the, in the booklet that I give you to help you understand more about what I'm speaking about right now. Basically, there are four key sections to a resume. There's also a few extra sessions as, or sections as well. There's a career profile, which is at the top. This is like a summary. It's the first thing that somebody should see. Then you have some highlights or achievements, you could call them. Then you have your professional or work experience, and then you have your education. You can have skills. You can have volunteer stuff. You can have other things that I would I primarily put at the bottom of the resume, but essentially there's those four main skills that virtually everybody is going to have. And at the top, is what I like to call a career profile. It is your executive summary of who you are. Now, some people ask me, well, Andy, why would I wanna put a summary at the top? Isn't that, aren't those extra words that somebody would have to read, aren't they just really interested in where I'm working and where I worked before and what my role was and what I did? And to that, I would say, yes, in part, they do want to understand those things, but let me, let me, ask, let me answer that question with a question. If, if you gave me a 100-page booklet and said, here's my analysis, my conclusions, everything you need to know, Andy, to make a decision about whether to do this or that, and you didn't put on top of it a one-page summary that I can breeze through to understand the highlights, the conclusions you've drawn, and your recommendations, I could read in one page and get basically 90% of what I needed to for the next 99 pages. Your resume is like that. That's what a lot of you do. And the worst part of it is not only did you miss out on the opportunity to share you with me the way you want me to know you, right? You Because you get to pull forward the pieces of information that you want me to concentrate on. You shine the light on what you want me to see. You missed that opportunity. But the other thing that you did is now you're going to make me go through the rest of your resume and I have to go through the rest of the 99 pages, right, in my analogy, and I have to look at everything so that I can assemble a story about who you are. That takes longer than if you would have just spoon-fed me that information at the top. So the career profile's greatest attributes are you get to control the narrative of how I think about you. Perhaps you did some work early in your, um, in your uh, work history or early in your profession, and you want to draw my attention to the first 10 years, not so much the second 10 years of your work experience. You can do that in a career profile by controlling the story and shining the light on 10 years of experience in, even if it was the first half. Right, But if you make me walk through your resume chronologically and I have to assemble all the pieces, and this becomes even more vital for somebody who's got a bit more of an eclectic background. So the career profile is your billboard. It's the first thing that they see. And if you think anybody is going to skip over your career profile, if it's well written, you're mistaken because they're going to read it from top to bottom. They're going to skim it from top to bottom more accurately, I should say. And if, if there is a well-crafted career profile at the top, I'm going to read that because it's going to save me time because you're giving me the highlights and you're giving them to me right away. 
And so I cannot stress enough how important the career profile is when, when you're putting your res resume together. I don't think for one second that people don't want it. People want to come to the conclusion of whether they want to speak with you or not, and they want to do that as fast as possible. It's not about how quickly can I read your resume. It's how quickly can I come to a decision. Anybody who tells you to omit the career profile doesn't understand that. Okay, so, so, so that's the first thing. Tell the story you want me to tell. Shine the light on the things you want me to know about you, not the things that I'm going to have to speculate you want to know about me or me to know about you. And the other thing is, if you control the narrative, you're going to control the story that you want me to know about you. If I have to assemble that story, it's likely that I'm not going to assemble it as accurately, and by as accurately, I mean as, mark, as marketable as you can be. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is has to do with your career highlights. The second section below the career profile is another chance for you to pull forward from all your years of work experience, different highlights, I recommend three, that you feel, and I, I, wanna, I, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying here. These career highlights are the elements that you feel will market you best based on what the employer you're reaching out to or the types of employers you're reaching out to, what they would need to know in order to determine how much value you can add for them. What is most important for them to know about you that's going to market you best as opposed to the three things you're most proud of? So let me give you an example from my life. I spent the first almost 18 years as a corporate leader uh, I was a management and information technology consultant. I did a lot of things. I consulted to a lot of companies. I did business process reengineering. I did systems implementations. I ran business units. I market, sold, served, served, and did a whole bunch of things. I built infrastructure. I built sales teams. I built marketing teams. I built delivery teams. I did all of these things. And there are some things that I did in the first 18 years that I am so proud of, none of which matter at all to me helping you as a career coach. Yes, my background as a practitioner might help. My understanding of you as an employee might help. But if I was to tell you that I built a tool that helped an IT consultancy estimate different types of implementation solutions that was able to accelerate their ability to do that, improve their accuracy and do it, was re we were re able to respond to requests for proposals faster, and so on and so forth. Would you care anything about that? No, but I'm so proud of that. And if that's one of my highlights and I'm trying to give you my resume to have you hire me as a career coach, it's not going to make any difference. But that's what a lot of you do. You put up top what you feel you're most proud of. And that isn't what always sells you best. What sells you best is your value in relation to them. How do I provide you value? I help you find jobs and I help you thrive in them. How I present myself to you, right, in the highlights I give you every Thursday at the live show, right, is in relation to what you need. And you come to the show based on the help you need. That's what I provide you. That's my highlight to you. Right, So you need to think of your value in terms of what they need. We call it selling to the gap. Right, You didn't come to YouTube or you didn't come to my blog or you didn't buy my book because you were looking for me. You were looking for the problems that I solved and you were looking for how to write a resume, how to interview better, right? how to negotiate your salary. That's what brought you to me but I had information available. You want to have highlights available to the employer that are in direct relation to what it is they need as it relates to the goals they want to achieve and the problems they're going to encounter in achieving those goals. You want to show, I've helped other organizations accomplish those goals. I've helped other teams accomplish those goals. I've helped them by solving these kind of problems, doing these kind of activities. And so when you think about the highlights that you want to select, that you want to pull to the top of your resume, you want me to see those immediately. So when I see you as a marketer, I know you've helped companies increase their leads, increase their prospect base, 
decrease their cost of prospect acquisition or decrease their cost of customer acquisition or increase the sales team's conversion rate because you, you located better prospects. Those are the kind of challenges that every company has from a marketing standpoint. You might not know my specific problems in achieving those goals, but generally speaking, there's a pretty easy way for you to ascertain what's important to me as an employer, what's important to me as a marketing executive if you're joining the marketing team or the recruitment team or the sales team or the accounting team or the whatever. So when you think about your highlights, the best thing you can do to market yourself is to pick the ones that most closely relate to how you're going to contribute the value in terms of the goals they're trying to achieve and the problems that they're likely to encounter in the way of achieving those goals. All right, so second point. Third point is bullets in general. Now, these guys right here, these highlights are bullets. They're resume bullets. And most of your resume, let's say, I don't know, half of it maybe, is gonna be filled with bullets. The problem with most people and the way they write bullets is they write bullets that are activities based. I manage the customer service team, yawn. Right, I manage the marketing department, yawn. That doesn't tell me anything. Basically tells me what your function is. And, and that's great. I want to know what happened as a result of you managing that team. Right. So what you need to think of in terms of the bullet and the sequence in which you present the bullet is what happened as a result of me doing what I did and how did I make that happen? The sequence of the bullet from left to right, beginning to end, starts with what happened. Something went up, something went down, something got smoother, something got more compliant, something of that nature. There was an impact. What was the impact? I call it the effect. The effect goes first, what happened, and then what caused it to happen. This is the activity. This is the afterthought. Okay. If you are presenting yourself as somebody who knows how to market, I know you know how to do marketing activities. What tells me how effective you are at doing those marketing activities is what happens as a result of you doing what you did. I don't know that you can make these little pictures out, but this is me getting cheeky. That's a dollar sign, but it's a figurative dollar sign, and that's a little gear. That's the activity. So I want you to think in terms of what happened first, and then how did I make that happen? Now, these bullets, these bullets are going to be three career highlights or so, and they're going to also be within each of the role positions that you had throughout your work experience. You want to be able to include bullets like this that say what happened as a result of me doing what I did. Explain that to whoever's looking at your resume, right? That goes on the resume. But the way I want you to consider how to lay these out is three bullets or so go in the highlight section. But the fourth tip I want to give you is related to the professional experience section. You could call it the work experience section. That's okay. Work, work any, call it anything you want, but it's basically your experience. And I'm assuming this means your professional experience. So full-time jobs that you have held or part-time jobs that you have held that support why you are qualified to help companies achieve the value you're going to help them achieve. Now, the way you lay your professional experience section out is company first. You want the company name on the left. And then there's a little description of what that company is, or perhaps if it's a large company, which area within the company you were, you were primarily focused on. Then you want to list your titles in reverse chronological order. So your most senior title or your latest chronological title that you held at an organization. Underneath that title, you're going to do two things. You're going to create a mini summary of the normal, mundane, obligatory things that you want to explain that you did as part of holding that title. So what do I mean? There's a housekeeping area. The housekeeping area is what I, I just call it the mundane context that lets you know generally what I was doing. So as an example, going back to my customer service example, housekeeping for a customer service manager might look like Responsible for, it's okay to start it this way, in the summary section underneath the title. Responsible for managing 56-person customer service team. Client portfolio included 58 customers focusing on blah, blah. 
right? That's housekeeping, mundane stuff. There's nothing interesting about it other than the fact that you manage 56 people. Gives me an idea of the size of team you met. Maybe you had seven direct reports. Maybe it was a multinational. Maybe it was across four different countries or continents or whatever. That's all boring context stuff. Just a little two, three sentence paragraph that includes all the mundane stuff. You don't need to put, I ran the status meetings, I participated in meetings, I created reports. Of course you did. We don't need to know all that. It doesn't market you very well. I just need to know you managed the team, how big it was, where it was, was it dispersed, were you 24 hours, whatever. Give me the day, give me the housekeeping stuff. Then you give me some bullets. Those bullets are the important achievements. Going back to these, this format. What major achievements did you accomplish in that particular position during those particular years? If you were the customer service manager, let's say between 2019 and present, just tell me, give me three bullets underneath the housekeeping. The housekeeping could be six bullets rolled into three lines, okay? The stuff that most people want to put on their resume. Just put the context in there and then tell me what achievements happen. And what type of achievements do I want to know, in this case, for a customer service manager? What does a customer service manager do? They're supposed to increase customer happiness, right? Maybe decrease call times or resolution times or increase revenue because they had they solved the problems faster and then they had gr a greater chance for their CSRs or customer service reps to upsell additional services things that made major impact and so the bullets that go in the professional experience section should be reserved to what I call the great eight basically the eight things employers care about they care about generating money, so increasing revenue. They care about increasing their market awareness, so increasing uh, brand awareness or market awareness, right? They, they care about increasing customer service. They inc care about imp increasing employee service. They care about decreasing costs, right? They care about positioning companies for events, right? These kinds of things are what you should reserve your bullets for because they are impactful business value added events okay i wouldn't put any bullet in my resume that did not answer this question what happened as a result of me doing what i did if it doesn't answer that it's housekeeping kind of stuff that you could toss in as a description underneath the title that you held meaning i manage the customer service team and all associated whatever there are 56 people okay that's what you did Okay, you're giving me the context. You're telling me the story. Now I understand. But as far as accomplishments go, those bullets underneath each title should be reserved for major business effects. So, so this is the big mistake that people make because a lot of times they list bullets after bullet after bullet. Managed customer service team. Had 56 direct reports. What, did status reporting and reported to management. Did, and this is why your resumes are four pages and not a page and a half or two pages. So I want you to think about these four things from a marketing standpoint to kind of round this out. You got the career profile, control the narrative, tell the story that you want told. The highlights illuminate the things you want me to concentrate on. Immediately, immediately get me to look at the things you cherry pick that tell me I'm going to create this kind of value for you, Mr. Employer. Bring that to the top, right? Don't go diving right into, right into your professional experience and making me assemble stories and then try to find where it was that you added value that I think is relevant to me and what I need at the moment. When you look at your bullets, whether they're career highlights or whether they're in the professional experience section, what happened as a result of me doing what I did? How did I do that? That's second. Last thing, professional experience Make sure you're creating it. Company, mini, mini description, title, mini description, and then bullets that are impactful about your achievements. You do this, and your resume is going to have a lot more power uh, to it. I've got a whole resume writing playlist on my YouTube channel, which you can check out. If you enjoyed this little clip here, make sure to click the like button. Share this. A lot of people need help. Uh, if you're here, if you're watching this on the recording, I'll see you next week. If you're here with me live, we're going to the chat. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I, I did not want to come empty-handed, 
So I, I just, I wanted to benchmark us again to make sure that you understand the resume is a marketing document, people. Okay, speaking of marketing document, I have created an entirely new resume writing workshop that I'm going to be conducting live Jan or January, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. It is not free. It's three hours, three days in a row, and there's other videos that are going to be included in this package because I can't get everything in. But each day we're going to be spending in the resume workshop, I'm going to take you through all this stuff in spades. We're covering every section. We've got real-life resume reviews. We're going to do them real-time together, help you write the resume while you're there. Uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I am going to show you how to write each section. You'll get all the structure. You'll get all the sentences. You'll get drop your stuff here. I'm going to show you not only how to write the resume, I'm going to show you how to use artificial intelligence to enhance your resume. You don't use artificial intelligence to write resume bullets because they write stink it writes stinky resume bullets. It writes them like professionals would write them, like working professionals would write them, not like a marketer would write them. So I'm gonna, but I'm going to show you the commands that I would use if I was to go to chat GPT or any of these other artificial intelligence based chat bots that you can use. But I'm going to show you how to use AI in order to stimulate content that goes on your resume. So that's going to be part of the program. We're going to do about an hour's worth of live resume reviews each day. So you got a good chance of me reviewing your resume. The only people this workshop is open to are going to be members of my job search coaching program. That program, which is my all-encompassing job searching program, is on special right now for 200 bucks off the interactive service package. So you can grab that. Next week, which is July 11th, 12th, and 13th, I've got a free, that one's free, on the YouTube channel, Interview Intervention Mini Camp, which is going to be some highlights and some very select lessons that I'm going to be pulling from my Interview Intervention 10th Anniversary Training Program, which is a 20-some-odd-hour training, full-on training program that is also a bonus in my Job Search Coaching Program. But if you are interested in attending, Kara could drop the, Kara, let's drop the interview intervention mini camp sign up. That's free. Uh, she'll pin that in the chat. Make sure you're registered for that. I got lessons. We got case studies. I'm teaching all of it live uh, next week. Those sessions start at 1030 Central Daylight Time. They'll run about two and a half plus hours each day. Uh, that's a, it's a lot of teaching. It, it's still a lot of teaching and it's still only a fraction of all my interviewing teaching, but it's a lot. There's a free workbook, uh, that will send Monday night, Monday night, the 10th of July. So make sure you're registered so we can get all of that to you. All right. What do we got here? Uh, how much is the resume workshop Nana? So the resume workshop, uh, not to be funny, that part the workshop itself is a, at this point, is a bonus. If you're a member of my job search coaching program on the interactive service package or the VIP package, because those two packages get attendance at all my coaching every month, my, my, my premium coaching, they also get online support. Right now, the job search coaching program, the interactive service package is normally a thousand bucks. You can get it for $7.97. And that's lifetime access, lifetime attendance at the pr premium group coaching sessions, as well as these workshop events. You can come to the resume writing workshop. When the resume writing workshop is over, so July 20th, when we finish, there's going to be a pretty sweet program that I'm dropping in, uh, in, in, in the premium members library that's going to have everything, all the recordings, all the supplemental sessions and everything that you need, there's also some bonuses. I'm also going to be helping you transition the resume into a job inter into job interview stories and a number of other things. All of that will sell for $500 alone, separately. So it's it's a really good deal if you if you're interested in in getting some resume writing help because I'll teach you how to write a resume that wins. It it really uh, it's been tried. It's tried. It's true. It's tested. 
uh, from all of my years as an executive recruiter and a career coach. It works universally throughout the world. We have people in nearly 200 countries that are paying members of that job search coaching program. It's it's a it's a it's a pretty full on full on uh, high value deal. All right. So Michael Tierney questions on highlights. Can one of my career achievement bullets be from a role from 20 years ago if I genericize the project, for instance, like full data center migration I performed? Yes, that's the point. It isn't, remember this, relevancy trumps recency. Okay, I need, I need that to register. If, if, I'm, if I'm Michael and I'm a technologist, which I know he is, and he is in he's got different areas of application or infrastructure that he is is knowledgeable on and he's trying to get a position and he's applying to an organization where he's going to be working and helping them with the networking in their data center that to me if he has experience in data center migration and so on and so forth that's going to be most important for me to know that he has what I need. And I know he's familiar and I know he's helped streamline this for other companies or, or migrated this or consolidated you know, systems into one centralized system, whatever it is that I'm trying to do. Now, he's going to know what those things are based on what he, is, what he does as a professional. He, you can look at organizations and look at their job descriptions and see what your responsibilities are. It's going to give you a clue. There's a number of places where you can get clues to. And by the way, in the resume writing workshop, I'm going to be teaching you how to ascertain that information to know which highlights to select. But regarding his question, what I care most about in the highlights section, if I'm reviewing your resume, I want to know that you know how to do what I need you to do because that's where I'm going to get the most value out of you. That's what I need. That's what I want to buy. So I would rather see a bullet from 20 years ago than a bullet from two years ago that doesn't have anything to do with what I need. So relevancy will trump recency. So when given the choice of which bullet to select to pull forward, you want to pull the ones that are most relevant to what the employer needs or the target company needs or the likely tar group of target companies that you're reaching out to. Great question. Okay, so this is a great question, Mohit. Is it okay to have three uh, highlights with each highlight being three lines or would it make it too crowded? If you have a highlight that's taking three full lines to write, it's too long. I don't need to know all that data, right? What happened and what did you do to make that happen? I generated revenue of, I generated 2 million in revenue by doing what? By streamlining a blah, blah, blah and consolidating this and that. By creating a targeted campaign for these types of customers in this geography. I don't need to know all the details. I just need to know what you did. In general, if you can't do that in two lines, I would challenge you to try to think about how to strip it down because you're putting in a lot of information that is I just don't need. Because remember, I need to know what happened and generally what you were doing. As I go and look down into the resume, there's going to be supporting evidence that you are somebody who could generate that by doing these kind of things because I'm going to be looking through and you're going to be explaining to me from a housekeeping perspective as well as other related bullets that, that, that substantiate that you can do that. If you have, I would rather you have six lines instead of nine lines kind of thing. It's okay if you have two and a half lines. I just, but I would really challenge you to try to strip them down. Generally speaking, I don't think there's any of you that could give me any bullet that's three lines that I can't make two. So I'm challenging you to do that. Phil M, what's up? Any issues with putting four career highlights? I know that three is a magic number, but four highlights that speak to my unified work story. Phil, if you want to put four, I'm cool with that. But make them four that are genuinely relevant. Don't You don't need all the extras. There's usually other places at the top you can put things. Remember, I, and I didn't get into the career profile script or the career profile structure, but there is there are ways I don't in the career profile, one of the one of the awesome things about career profiles is it should be a roll up 
of your accomplishments. Not specific accomplishments, but a roll-up of your accomplishments. And so a lot of times, if you're looking for four highlights or five highlights or whatever, usually some of it is probably an aggregation that can be rolled into the career profile. Let's not split hairs. If you want to put four, it's okay. And by the way, with all the humility I can muster, there is an endless number of ways for you to create a resume that gets job interviews. I'm trying to give you pointers into how to make yours more powerful, more streamlined, get the right information in, use the space effectively. So I, and it's not to say that if you have a resume style or format that doesn't look exactly like the one I recommend, you can still get interviews. I'm just trying to give you what I have noticed gets the best results. And I don't think, you know, anybody should be losing sleep if they have four highlights as opposed to three. People like things in threes. Uh, I would think about the three most important ones and make sure those are in there. The other thing, the other thing, I tell all my boot campers, you could have 10 highlights if you want. All you need to do is swap them out depending on who you're sending your email to or who you're sending your your uh, boss hunting message to, or, or if you are in fact applying online, what's the position, description that you're applying for? So, so lots of ways of doing that. Medina T, in the career highlights section, should we mention achievements we had in the previous job or can I mention something I'm proud of that I did say seven years ago? Going back to Michael Tierney's question, relevancy over recency. Okay, so I would rather have something seven years old that was more in line with what the employer needed than something that was seven minutes old that didn't have anything to do with what they needed. Gene, how to best summarize career highlights for senior executive ranks with longer work history? It, it doesn't make any difference how long you've been working. You are at a transition point. At any trend, meaning you're going from one job to another or the couch to a job or whatever it is, but you're in a transaction right now. The only thing I care about in the transaction is what is the most immediate, impactful things that I need to show this particular employer on this particular day about why I'm going to add a ton of value to them. The, the, the more senior you are, the more at a disadvantage you are of threading the needle as far as your value in relation to what they need because you have so many options to choose. The most important thing for a senior person to do is choose correctly. It isn't about listing more things. It's about figuring out what they need. What is the job function you're targeting and what is the company you're targeting and what do they need? Select the three things that are most impactful. If you're a chief operating officer, you know how to build the product, market it, sell it, deliver it, manage the people, right? Like I could go on, right? COO's got like 10 jobs. Okay, well, if I'm a COO, what do I want to talk about? Well, I can encapsulate marketing, selling, uh, and serving into one element, right? I sold more. We gained more customers. We built the region out. We expanded internationally. Inside one highlight there is an inherent list of valuable things that you did and contributed. And remember, there's a deduction that occurs. If I'm looking at a chief operating officer and I see somebody who was able to expand the business and help it double through customer acquisition, co corporate acquisitions, whatever it might be, then I know that that person understands how to do seven or eight different things. Okay, let me deduce. If they were able to do that, that must mean they must know this, this, and this. And then I think in terms of, okay, well, what are the most impactful things a chief operating officer could do? So it's growth and expansion through what? Top line revenue, bottom line reduction. It could be depending on your company's growth strategy. Maybe you were involved and you were managing the mergers and acquisitions and other things. Maybe there was a head of M&A that reported to you or something like that. How does the chief operating officer make the sales, make the service, make the growth of the company hum? Those would be the three I'd go after, right? Kind of thing. You don't need to tell me about how you recruited a thousand people. I don't care, right? I want to know how the money's going to go up, how the money's going to go down, right? And just tell me the different ways that you did that. That's how you choose. Then 
Then you look if you are have the luxury of a job description or an executive recruiter who's helping you or right or you reached in and a corporate recruiter is discussing whatever with you as you look at their job description if they have one they should have the goals of that particular position you marry back your highlights in alignment with the goals that they have if you're not sure what's most important you look at the sequence in which they listed what it was they wanted you to accomplish or do because it usually goes without saying that they put it in priority order Right? They don't usually list the most important thing fifth. Right, It's usually first. Right, If they say, we want you to develop the strategy to blah, blah, your highlight is about how you created a strategy that pioneered this and that, that grew this and that. That's your highlight kind of thing. So you want to cherry pick. And the higher up you go, the more difficult it is to narrow down what they need to see. I spend a ton of time with very senior people narrowing down their storytelling, narrowing down their resume, narrowing down their introductions, and a lot of those things. It's easier for a junior person. It is, because it's what you know. You have a, a smaller scope of what you know. Fan of Andy, what if the highlights are not relevant to the position? Who cares? That's right. I'm not even sure that, I think you answered your own question. You've got to pick highlights that matter or you go away from the end goal and you go down the chain till you get to something that matters. Okay, like what do I mean? What do I mean? Well, I mentioned in the little in the talk that, you know, there's great eight elements that I think are really important to any to any uh any employer, right? Revenue goes up, market awareness goes up and so on. Let's say you are in the marketing department and you are a worker bee and your job is to create uh, the content marketing social media messages. Now, you, you are increasing brand awareness by creating a social media message, except creating the social media message does nothing, right? You, you wrote a message in and of itself that does nothing. Then it's the application of what happens with the message so whether you or somebody else takes it and put it puts it into a social media post we still don't know anything because the po social media post could have been crappy right the only way for me to tell if it's good or it's a highlight is i gotta keep going so what happens with the social media post somebody clicks on it then what happens just because somebody clicked on it doesn't mean anything so then what happens well the click has to turn into something now you might not control what the click turns into, but if you can control an increase in traffic or an increase in clicks, it's likely there's a correlation to the increase in what? Recognition or opt into whatever, your free services, book a call or whatever it might be. And so you work backwards. Did I create an ingredient that helped the grade eight? Now, you're increasing market awareness, but what you're doing on a day in and day out basis in and of itself doesn't increase the, the market awareness. It's the application of what you did. You have to trace what you did, an ingredient. You just wrote social media text. That's just an ingredient, right? Then there's another step that has to occur, a prerequisite step that, that social media text needs to be circulated, and that may or may not be done effectively. And so what you're trying to highlight is not what you did. It's the delta that happened from what you did to what was occurring before you did it. That's the most magical thing I've said in these 43 minutes. Every time you think of a bullet, if you can't tell me the delta, that's the triangle, right? The delta, it's, it, you haven't shown me anything. I wrote social media text, so what? Somebody posted it on social media on all the platforms, who cares? Um, we, we, we had a thousand clicks. So what? Did you have 1100 the week before? Did you get worse? Right? I still don't have what I need. When I started writing the social media, what you're trying to convey is the traffic went up X percent. Okay, now I know that if the traffic goes up because it was here, now it's here, you did your job. You improved traffic. You improved market awareness, right? Kind of thing. If you got to be able to explain the delta. When somebody said managed $30 million portfolio, uh, was it $40 million when you started, right? Did it go down? 
Right. I don't care. It, like, yeah, I get context, but did you grow it? So the highlight, you might, the housekeeping might be managed $30 million portfolio. The highlight is grew portfolio from 10 million to 30 million, right? That's the delta. So this is really important. So, so you want to get to the point, fan of Andy, I don't know if you're a boot camper. You are going to love the resume writing workshop if you are, because I go through all of this. I mean, I go through this down to the dot. I go through everything. Nana, Andy, given the example you gave, does that mean career highlights have to be aligned to the eight goals of every organization? Yes. I'll take you one step further, and then I'll kind of loop back to explain what she's asking. Any bullet you write, any bullet you write, if it doesn't answer one of the great eight questions, it isn't even a bullet. Yeah, I wouldn't even bother. So you either increase the revenue, you increase the market awareness, you decrease cost, you increase customer satisfaction, you increase employee satisfaction, you position yourself uh, for an event or corporate positioning, right? Divestiture, merger, those kind of things. Or you streamline processes. And in effect, this makes costs go down. That's the eight. If you don't do, if your bullet doesn't address one of those eight, it's not a bullet. It, there's no value to it. Meaning that you're not, you're not enticing me because it, I don't, I don't know anything other than what the you wrote the social media text. That isn't the bullet. The social media text was being written because you're trying to increase market awareness. You're trying to increase market awareness because the more either well-known you are or the more people that find your website, right? you could be the technologist who optimizes the website and tunes it for search engine optimization. And because you tuned it, more people are finding it. You've increased market awareness by, by making your website more findable. When people go in and search, how do I write a resume? Or how do I'm looking for these kind of running shoes or whatever it is. So every time you write a bullet, a bullet, it should address one of those eight things. If it doesn't, it's not even worth putting on your resume and don't even take up real estate. You created reports. That doesn't tell me anything. Did you create reports that someone used to make better decisions? Great, you're telling me a little more. What decisions did they make? I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to ask you. What decisions did they make? How do you know they made them better? What? How did you give them better? Inf did you give them faster information? Could you make them faster? Could they make them better because they were more informed? Right kind of thing. What happened? What happened? What happened? Keep you got to keep asking yourself till you get to the point where you can say this is what happened. It was one of the great eight. Here's how it, here's how it worked. Uh, let's see. We got some career gap questions. Sharon H, how to update your resume after a six-year career bake after caring for elderly parents? Love this question. If you are returning to the workforce for any reason, you traveled for two years, uh, you decided to take a break and go volunteer, anything, elderly parents, child caring, whatever it might be. What I like to do is I like to diffuse all that up at the top. And so what I tend to do is in this career profile, this career profile, if you don't haven't been to the Andy School of Resume Writing, is two paragraphs. The top paragraph is a summary that encapsulates seven or eight components that should go in it. The next paragraph is what I call the core competencies where you're listing out the specific business functions that you are knowledgeable of. You're only doing that for the cheap seats and the ATS. At the end of that listing, Harley says hi. At the end of that listing, you can put returning to the workforce after six years of family care. And then your resume and the professional experience. So you're going to pull some highlights, whatever your highlights are from six years prior and, be, and before. Then when you get into this section, it's going to start with, two, or it's going to end with 2017. Now I don't need to worry about, okay, you were taking care of your family and for the six years. Okay, you're returning to the workforce. This happens every day on this planet a million times. So what you're going through is, you know, you think about, well, I'm at such a disadvantage. Well, what I want to know is what are you doing right now to brush up your skills, get reacquainted in whatever it was that you were doing? Do you want to make a switch now? That's fine. You want to start at the bottom somewhere? That's cool too. But that's how I would handle that. And I also, I'll take you one better. I don't know if this question is, is somewhere, but... Anytime you want, remember I said, remember we said it, the career profile controls the narrative. 
Okay, I want you to spoon feed me what you want to spoon feed me. If you just got your executive certification from Harvard Business School crash course and whatever, you can put at the end of your career profile, um, recently attained blah, blah certification from Harvard you know, Business School because you, that's noteworthy and that's actually kind of cool. Recently attained CCIE certification, blah, blah, blah. Cool, awesome. Multilingual, fluent in Spanish, French, German. Awesome. Like if, if that's relevant because you're applying for a particular type of position where you, you know, being a multilinguist helps, then put it up there. What? I'm controlling the story. I'm spoon feeding you what I want you to see. You can pull something that's from the bottom of the resume on the second page and move it all the way up to the top and blend it right in. And trust me when I tell you, there's not a, re there's not a recruiter out there that would miss that. Because why? Because it's not part of the pattern, right? It's not part of what's usually up there. Those words would stick out even if I was glancing at the, at the thing Oh, I did a video, it might be on my YouTube channel, where I literally showed you samples of career profiles. And then what I did was I jumbled up the words and I said, can you make out what this says? And 100% of the people in the chat said, I, I can get it. I know it's there. Now, I'm, I want you to imagine a trained recruiter who looks at a thousand of these a day. You think, oh, well, I, I only have a few seconds. That's right. You only do. Do you know how to slow them down and make them go where you want? By doing certain things that break patterns that force them to notice, right? That's what's important. You want to be noticed. Think book covers, right? Somebody walks in the bookstore. I want my new book to have a cool cover, right? And you don't know what's inside. But you see that and you walk over kind of thing. Amina, I have a resume gap from June 2022. I've put learning and working on professional certifications during that time, but I feel embarrassed about my career gap. Don't. Don't. Life happens for whatever reason. You've had a glorious year off. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and didn't stress out the whole time. Just put, um, you know, took time off since June 2022, attained these professional certifications. That's it. Don't worry about it. Same kind of thing like with, with what I just told Sharon. Nanette, let's see, there's a big heart next to this one. Job search program is so worth it. It's helped me shift my approach to my entire search. You know, it, it's true. Don't even, you don't even have to listen to me. Listen to Nanette. My recently new boot camper, probably within the last month. By the way, if you have any questions about the programs or the free event next week, three days, again, interview intervention mini camp starts Tuesday. I'm going to be releasing a, a fun video on Monday next week. So not my normal Tuesday release because Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday were live 1030 to one, one o'clock probably, maybe longer. And then the following week is a premium session for my job search coaching program members. I call them boot campers. We used to call it the job search boot camp. But they'll always be boot campers to me. Uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th. And that's complimentary only to them. And those are the only people that can attend. So if you want to be with me live, maybe get your resume reviewed, see a lot of real life examples, hear what goes on through my head, See the suggestions I give people, not to mention all the instruction booklets and everything else that goes along with writing it. We'll do some AI stuff too, because I haven't done any AI for the public yet. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna do that uh, during uh, during the nineteenth or eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth. And and Kara, um, maybe maybe you know what? If if any, because we're on the resume topic, can you drop in the resume workshop page in the chat and give people a chance to kind of head over? Because the page is pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty decked out. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't even know if I could do this really quickly. Maybe I can. Maybe I can try to pull up the page and show you this. If uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully, you know, like nothing will crash because I'm I'm doing this on the fly here. But uh, here we go. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can do this. This is this is this is pretty cool. Yeah. Let me let me give. Yeah. Just to give you an idea. Let me see if I can. Let's see how I can do this. Um, here we go. Can you see this? This is the resume writing workshop page. And so, you know, you're going to go through mindset. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about how you capture your value. This is a thinking person's resume writing program. We're going to go through all the ATS stuff, all that nonsense, our artificial intelligence. This is what it looks like. 
So this is what the this is what the three days are going to look like. So I'm going to take you through each section of everything and how to write it. You also get all these bonuses. I'm going to help you with your branding, your storytelling, cover letters, and all that other stuff. And then I'm going to even take you through, and you see this, some interviewing stuff. So you know, how do you determine your value? There's not, I'm going to teach you how to do this, but there's also case studies that I'm putting in the program where you're going to be able to see all this, how to introduce yourselves, how you take the career profile to, um, to, to the interview, how you take bullets and turn them into stories. All this stuff is, is in this program. And so this is what we're doing the week of the 18th, 19th, and 20th. And here again, these are from, this is free for members of my job search coaching program. So so maybe check that out when you got a little time later. Uh, when you got a little time later, make sure you're uh, signed up for the interview intervention mini camp. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you about how to get ready for interviews, how to get ready for your overall search even, and then how to story tell. That's a really good session. And then also how to actually execute on the on the interviews and we're going to go through question meaning the common questions how to answer them all that stuff is is in is in the mini camp that i'm going to be taking you through so i hope you hope you join me hope you join me for that and let me see get my live stream back if you're getting value out of this please click the like button make sure you subscribe share it people need help they need help steve what's up well we got a lot of steves here steve manry it, is it better to target mid-level jobs or scale down my resume for entry-level jobs since I haven't received interviews for either in the past month? 13 years of sales and customer service experience. Steve, um, and, and this goes for everybody. The, the, the reason, the obviously I don't know you and I only have a couple hundred characters here that we're working with. Generally speaking, when you are interview, you know, you're trying to interview and you're not getting interviews, there's usually a couple of problems. These are the first places I'd go. The first one is what you said is I haven't been getting interviews. Now, I don't know how you've been trying to surface them. If you're putting your resume in the applicant tracking system, even if your resume hums, I would say that's zero. That does not count. So that's like not even job searching. I don't expect you to get any interviews that way. Yes, some of you will, but that's not the way I would go. Very small percentage. If you're not targeting the right companies and actually sending messages on a consistent basis, that's the next place I would go. I would look to see, are you actually subscribing to my job search challenge? I have a registered trademark job search challenge technique. I have a program or I have a free version on YouTube uh, I have a, or I have a paid program. Or the paid program is also a bonus with the job search coaching program, or you can buy the job search challenge program separately. Are you actually being consistent? If you are, if you are avoiding the ATS and you are being consistent with reaching out to companies, the next thing I look at is, are you targeting the right companies? The next thing I look at is, are you targeting the right bosses? The next thing I look at is, are you actually crafting messaging that works? Cover When I say cover letters, I mean emails that you're sending to them. And then is your resume in the right form? Meaning, are you marketing yourself like this, like we talked about today? Are you showing your value and all that good stuff? Your job is not to dumb down your resume and go for lower positions. Your job is to package your marketing material, your brand, your resume, and everything that goes along with it, your storytelling in the interviews, and everything to substantiate the value you can contribute. Usually the issue, if you get all the way down and it becomes a resume problem, let's just say you're doing all that other stuff. Let's say it is a resume problem. Then it's usually because you didn't market yourself effectively on your resume. If you got 13 years of sales experience and customer service experience, you can get a job. There are companies that are out there that would be happy to interview you. Somewhere in that chain, it's broken. But if the resume is what's broken, then the resume is broken because you didn't highlight the things that they actually need to see in relation to what it is they need to see. Okay. If you're a salesperson and your resume is not littered with dollars and cents and the number of clients, the number of widgets sold, and all that stuff, that's a that's really bad, okay? If I look at a career profile for a salesperson, there's no numbers, or three career highlights, and there's no numbers, that's really bad. I probably wouldn't even talk to you, okay? That doesn't mean you're not great. 
Just remember this. I tell you this. Your job interview is not about how well you do your job, right? It's about how well you describe what you did. It's your storytelling. Your resume writing is not about how well you do your job or, or your accomplishments. It's how you tailor the description of your accomplishments and the value you're going to contribute and how you did that in relation to what the person reviewing it wants. And how do I know that? It's easy to know that. What are the top goals of a salesperson? Make more money. Get more clients. Right? Do it faster. Do it cheaper. Right? That's it. There's, it's, that's not complicated. Build a, if you're a sales manager, build a process that streamlines your sales rep's ability to sell more, sell faster, respond faster, right? streamline, qualify faster, and, and just make the process more effective. And then what? Increase win rate of your team. Right? These, are, these are fairly easy to get at, especially when you're intimately familiar with your job. How am I graded as A? Ask yourself that question. That's what's going to tell you what goes in the highlights. So I'm guessing it's your, you know, I mean, it's somewhere in that chain I just described. But don't, don't dumb down anything. Your job is to show why you're worth it and how you're going to contribute. Mohit, should I embed the message narrative about my career trajectory in my resume? What is my long-term goals and where do I want to reach in my career? Absolutely not not hard no, ever. Your resume is about the value you're going to contribute to somebody at a moment in time and for the near future. Your long-term goals and aspirations have no business being on your resume. You don't want to put them there. Don't write them in a cover letter. Just because you're ambitious, in many cases, that could be a detriment to somebody who needs you. If your career aspiration is to be the CIO and you're a director of IT, and you come in saying, well, I want to be a CIO in two years. And I'm like, I don't know. We love our CIO. He's not leaving. He's going to die here or he's going to get out in old age or whatever, right? Now that I know and I don't want to talk to you kind of thing. Just don't put that on your resume. Show your value, not your wants. Cindy, what exactly do we need in the resume profile? So there are a number of things that I believe resonate with an employer to give me two things about you. Here's the goal of the career profile is to help me understand who you are and how big you are and, 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 and do that in, in terms of context. So what do I need to know? What are you, right? I need to be clear on what you are. If you can't give me that in one second, that's a fail, okay? What are you? I'm a senior marketing professional. I'm a marketing manager. I'm a sales executive, right? Kind of thing, something like that. Okay, what kind of companies have you worked for? Big, small, startup, public, private, right? Area of expertise, particular industry, financial services, healthcare, manufacturing, emerging markets, right? Kind of thing. Uh, what is it that you have accomplished if you are a marketing professional, do you increase brand awareness? Great. That's what I expect. Can you give me a roll-up of how much you've helped organizations in aggregate improve their market market share, market awareness, market whatever? If you're a seller, how much have you sold? Sold $100 million in widgets and services, right, kind of thing. Give me some kind of roll-up accomplishment. Is there anything that you do particularly well that you want to get in there? But you're basically aggregating. You're giving me all the pieces that I need to understand about what, what it is that you do and who it is that you are so that I know, oh, okay, this is the kind of person that has worked for Fortune 500 companies, understands how to implement large IT systems, knows the whole software development life cycle, what kind of Size pro worked on projects that were ten million dollars. Managed the staff, so managed teams of up to fifty people. Okay, great. These are the kind of things that you want to. These are like the top line things. Okay, so now I know who she is. I know who he is. I know what they're about. And now what you're doing is then you're moving into the and and here are the wow factors. Okay, here's some specific things that I did highlights, and then here's all the justification and where I did it and more detail. 
And I kid you not, as an executive recruiter who looked at a lot of resumes each day, I could tell just by looking at the career profile in 90% of the cases whether I was going to want to talk to that person or not, meaning I didn't even have to read the rest of the resume. I glanced at it for a few seconds, and I would rarely read the detail in the professional experience. I'd look at the companies you worked for. I'd kind of look at the positions or functions you held. And then I would just look to see, does it look like they're substantiating it? Because I'm not going to read this. That's what happens. So that's why I want you to know how important a career profile is. And anybody who tells you you should not have one should be flogged. So that's that's what I would say there, Cindy. And um, I, I'm sure I have some profile videos on, on the YouTube channel if you want to check them out. Or you can come to the resume workshop. Cisco Maldonado, what are you doing, buddy? What is the best approach when four of your roles are apples and then a two-year orange in the middle of the resume? I'd like to save the real estate. I, I, I'm not following because you should not have any trouble saving real estate. Um, so here's what I do. Uh, you, you want... I'm assuming you want the apples and not the oranges to shine. I'm just making that assumption. Um, it, right? You got a two-year orange. So what I tend to do is the further away from today I get, the shorter the amount of real estate I take. Example. So when I was working, I spent 10 years in my first company, five years at my second company, and then like 11 months at my third company. And then there was like a year gap in there. I took a year off before my third company. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working like, it was like seven, eight, 17, 18 years or whatever. We would kind of add them all up. And I did the 10 years, the 10 year one it was this much, 10 years. I squeezed into, can, I don't, can you see that? That much, right? Anderson Consultant, you know, Accenture, not formally doing business as Anderson Consulting, associate partner, whatever the hell I was you know, um, 1988 to 1999, you know, uh, sold and managed large scale IT projects ranging in sizes up to a hundred bajillion dollars with a hundred people on it, whatever. That's it. That's my whole this, 10 years. Bang. One line, two lines, right? So the further away from today you go, the less real estate. Now, exception to the rule is if between 1988 and 1999, there was a lot of experience there that I wanted to call their attention to. I would only put bullets in for the stuff that was absolutely germane. But what I want people to understand is I had a 10-year run at a reputable consultancy and learned a lot of processes and those kind of things. They make the inference. Oh, nice, 10-year run, well-trained kind of thing, right? Kind of stuff. And so, no, I don't have to tell them that at 23 years old, I was managing a six-person team. And at 27 years old, I was managing a 50-person team. And at, at, at 32 years old, I was managing $100 million. And like, I don't need to go into all that stuff, right? Who cares? Kind of thing. And so what you want to shine, if you got a two-year app, just say, you know, uh, I don't know when it was, 2017 to 2018, director of marketing, you know, built you know, build and manage campaigns that sold and increased this and that and the boom, boom, boom. That's it. Done. Kind of thing. That's not a lot of real estate. So the, the, remember, it's a, it's a, and this is for Cisco, but everybody else. It's a marketing document. Do you really care what I did in 1999 or 1998 when I managed this, you know, insanely mega project and then sold another $80 million project to another client? Like, no, no one cares about that. Right. So so that's and it doesn't go to market me because I'm a I do something different now. Danny Forbes, a burning resume question. We love those. As a user experience, user interface expert, I feel my resume layout should reflect my skills in that area. Can that affect how the bots process my resume? Yes, the bots don't like graphics and colors and tables and lines and th they want to see it. They read ones and zeros. OK, now. What I would say to you is I, at the top of my resume, would say user experience portfolio and have a hyperlink to so they can go and see it. Show me videographer, same thing, right? Put marketing brochures together, same thing, kind of thing. 
Abisik, what is a result-driven resume? Does it work in shortlisting? A result-driven resume is what I just said. What happened? What was the result? I sold this. I managed. I sold this. I didn't manage this, right? I I increased. I decreased. There are, you're going to learn more about this in the resume writing workshop too for those that are attending. When somebody says to you, you know, you should start your bullet with an action verb. That's dumb. Why? Because I could say managed customer service team. I started it with an action verb, didn't I? Right. There's certain action verbs that immediately tell this Thing up here, an activity is going to follow. Helped, supported, managed, right? Ran. Those all suck, okay? You want to go with increased, I know a number's coming. Decreased, right? I know a number's coming. If not next, it's going to be the next or the next word, right? Sold, boom. He's going to tell me how many he sold, right? Like those verbs go to what? Those verbs go to this. What happened? What was the number? Increase, decrease by how much? Right? Zero to what? 10 to 20. Just give me, give me the result. That's a results-driven resume. All you need to do is think about what happened. What happened as a result of what I did? If you say to me, Andy, all I did was prepare the reports, that doesn't tell me anything. What were the reports for? They were to identify the customers we secured this week. What'd you do with the information? Nothing. Somebody else used it. How did they use it? Go figure it out. Go find out what happened. They created reports to do what? What did you do? That's another one. Created is a bad word to start a bullet with, right? By creating. So you increased something, right? Visibility too. You increase the number of. You you decrease the speed at which my managers could make decisions about. Talk to me about what the value was you contributed. If you created a report, did you consolidate it? You accelerated somebody's ability to figure out what was going on by creating a report that extracted what. That's the what. That's the how it happened. You created something. That's not the punchline. Most people bury the lead if they even put the lead in at all. So a results-driven resume is going to have this. Okay? All right. That's a great question. Mohit, should we have a generic resume for j different job profiles, specifically for boss hunting emails? I would not. Don't include boss hunting in any of this. I'm thinking in terms of I have a base resume that I'm going to use 90 5% of the time for all positions that I target, boss hunt, even if I had to apply it in an ATS. And then I'm going to massage it for whatever I need to do, if I need to massage it at all, if there's any particular keywords. If you are a seller and your company calls you an account executive and the job description that you're targeting or the boss you're targeting says, you know, manage 11 business development representatives, you change your nomenclature to business development representative. Business development executive, something like that. And so you're you're spending seconds tweaking. You're not spending hours tweaking. So you have a base resume. I don't call it a generic resume because there's nothing generic about the resume. It's a base resume that you use most of the time for most of the, the communications and applications. That's the way I would think about that. Eric Nevo, should you use a rich text version of your resume to get through the ATS scanner? I don't. So, okay, much like the YouTube algorithm, I don't think anybody truly knows. However, the testing that we've done, the feedback we've got, the discussions I've had with recruiters at companies that I've worked with and all that good stuff say, I would just put a Word resume in the into the system. I wouldn't put a PDF into the applicant trashing system. I, if you follow my resume format, I believe that it is... It is hands down the best. It has the sections it looks for. Most resumes, uh, most systems, I think, read it this way. There's a lot of plain text. I mean, it's stylistic and it's formatted, but it's generally plain text. My resume uh, format, there's no, you don't have a lot of columns. There's none of that stuff. There's no tables. There's no a lot of graphics, none of that. And it just looks clean and rich. And, you know, people give me feedback that they are, that the, it gets through. I mean, as good as it can. 
what formats AT Word, use Word. It, so here's the rule. If you are emailing somebody and sending them the resume or boss hunting or teammate hunting or recruiter hunting or HR person hunting or sending it into an open box, email box, use a PDF. It's safer. People feel and trust them more. If you're if you send them a Word doc, I don't I don't love the only Word documents I open that come my way are people I have one on one coaching sessions with me where I say, send me the Word docs or send me your documents. And if you apply in an applicant trashing system, I would use the work doc. If you email somebody that has to open the attachment, send a PDF. Uh, Francis, how many pages of resume are we talking here? Professional experience of 20 years never ends in two pages. Okay, so Francis, uh, there is absolutely no reason. I could get my entire life down to 26 words. If I can do that, you can get a commercial, and I say a commercial resume in two pages or less. And if you cannot do that, then you are putting in a lot of stuff in there that no one cares about but you, okay? So I, I have people send me four-page resumes that I can get into one page or two, depending on what it is they want to put. So it isn't about it never ends in two pages. It's about you have a lot of stuff in there that is fluff that doesn't need to be said, but you feel the need to say it because you're either proud of it or you think it's going to add value. It No one ever reads the third page as it is, right? They're just skimming for what they want. If your education's on the third page, they just glance at it to see that it's there or any of the extras. But if you've got multiple pages and your work experience just goes on and on, no one is reading that stuff. So people just don't. And even if they had all day to do it, they wouldn't want to do it. And so the way that I look at this is if you are using a CV, a curriculum vitae, which should be reserved for medical professions, legal professions, academic professions, anybody who does extensive research, has extensive publications, and so on and so forth, that could be 30 pages if you actually have the goods. So that's the way I look at that. Julie. Is it acceptable to summarize older experience under prior experience section after professional experience that lists company name and title only no dates? This is a phenomenal question and a phenomenal tactic. Let's say, let's just say, Andy, 34 years guy, okay? I've got 34 years of work experience, or it starts back in 88, okay? Let's say I didn't have a 10-year run to open up my career, but I had like three years, three years, three years. Three years, three years. The first 15 years of my career was three, 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 five of them, 15 years. And I, what? It's a marketing document. Now, for background check purposes and to adhere to background checks, virtually every employer is going to run one of these. And anybody, at least in the United States, that you have given your social security number to is going to come up on your background check if you've gotten paid. So what I say to people is, I want you to pick a start line, okay? The start line is, I'm going to pick a spot in my resume history, I'm going to make a cut, and then I'm going to show every position that I had chronologically, because when it comes up on a background check, they're going to see that I worked for this company from 2010 to 2015, this company from 2016 to 2018, this company from 2018 to 2019, this company from whatever, and you keep it clean and you don't omit anything. Then you're going to say to me, Andy, how far back should I go? I'm going to say, everybody, it's a marketing document. If five years market you best, you go back five. If 15 market you best, you go back 15. If 50 market you best, you go back 50. Any coach, trainer, resume writer that says they only care about 10 years, you should shoot them. They should not be allowed to give advice. I mean, that's how much that makes my skin crawl. It's a marketing document. They don't know who you're sending it to. You don't know what the person's looking for. What market you best? Now, once you make the cut line, so we're talking Julie here. Let's say Julie says, Andy, from 2010 to 2023, the last 13 years, I'm looking sweet. And this is the most relevant stuff to what I'm applying for. Awesome. Your number's 13. You go to 2010. Then I say, Julie, you got fifth, you know, you're like Andy. He's got five sections of three years apiece below the 2010 line. Okay. What markets you best? Well, Andy, my second job out of college, and then not the third, but the fourth one out of college, that markets me best. Great. We're going to take those two. You're going to say additional experience. 
Now, hopefully, you're just substantiating what you did with those two in the 13 that you're showing. You say additional experience. Held such and such position at prominent companies such as boom and boom and did this and that and accomplished this and that. That's it. Oh, she has more experience working at those companies and more relevant experience that was before 2010 that substantiates that she does this and has more experience, but she didn't go and show all the different companies, some that were not as relevant. So you like talk about like Cisco's case. This one was kind of an oddball. Well, once you make your cut line, you want to keep everything in order because when the background check comes, they're going to see everything that they're looking at. These are automated systems that do this stuff very quickly and they can find it with a push of a button and they pay the fee. Okay. But below the, below the cut line where she says additional experience, anything goes. So you say, I'm just calling your attention to things that, Hey, tell me about these jobs. What did you do there? I had other jobs, yeah, they weren't as relevant, and that's okay because that market's her best, whether it was 13 years, 17 years, 18 years, 25 years. I got news for you. If you've been working for 25 years and you're 47 years old, you're not old. Okay, you might think you're old because somebody, you're interviewing with a company that, you know, the oldest person in the company is 29, and you think there's an ageism problem. Yes, ageism is a thing, but it's not an insurmountable thing. So what markets you best? I have people in their 60s and 70s in my boot camp that get jobs. I get emails daily from them. And so if, you, if, you, if you're wondering what the difference is, they're either marketing themselves more effectively, they're more consistent in their reach outs, they tell better stories in the interviews, right? And they know how to adjust for that. They know how to pick the right targets, right? So, so think about all that. Guy or, or geek, guy I'm assuming, what tense or person to write the resume? First or third? Okay, never use any first person pronouns. And in most cases, you don't need any third person pronouns at all. Your resume is a is series of elegant fragments. You don't need the word a, you don't need the word the, you don't need a lot of the extra filler stuff that you put in. It's a fragment. Raised this by doing that. I know you did that, right, kind of thing. So often you won't find any, any pronouns or anything related to, to that. Basil, what's up, buddy? Boot camp is worth every penny. Stacy, what's up? There is so much in the boot camp. Thank you so much and a great community led by Andy. Thanks, Stacy. Ru Ruby uh, M, wait, I'm not sure if that's all one word, the way it came through, or is it Theodore? Andrew, I would like to thank you for all the work. I recently crushed two interviews in the same month. Now I had to decline one offer uh, for the best job, and I'm in Kigali, Rwanda. I love it very, very, very. I am like blown away by the number of people in other. I mean, I get emails from people in the middle of the Indian Ocean on a rig or whatever it is. Like, I just I love the fact that you're all over the place, uh, and that that. Thanks to, you know, the little plug-in in the cord and the internets, we can, we can do this. I really do. Venkata, recent grad. I graduated from U Michigan with a double major in cell biology and computer science in December 2022. I'm looking for tech jobs. Tech jobs. I took the MCAT last month in May and I'm in full app mode now. Want to join the program, but don't have enough money and parents aren't encouraging me, aren't encouraging me to go to this coaching program thinking it won't help or isn't needed. How can I convince them? So, uh, I, I, okay, wait, couple, couple schools of thought here, because I know you're asking for my help and guidance about how to convince them. And on the one hand, and I want to say this in the context of you all as job seekers and Venkata, you in particular, and everybody else who's job seeking. Number one, I want you to remember this. Your success is going, I don't know if you remember the marketing funnel, this is what your job search looks like. This is where you, what it, if you want the best results. 90% of your time is spent sending resumes out. 1% is sent in logistical emails going back and forth. Where should I be? Was the interview? What, who am I meeting with? And so on. And 9% should be spent actually interviewing and negotiating your job offers. 
but most of you spend a lot of time in the exchanges area. And what you're doing in the exchanges area is you're begging. You're begging people to, well, I, you put the position on hold, when's it gonna be open again? Hey, I know you're gonna get back to me, I haven't heard back from you, when's the next round? You're, you're doing a lot of chasing. And rule number one of sales is, yes, the best salespeople are the ones who can show somebody that they have latent pain and help them surface it and look at things in the right context. But the truly most success, so that's the most effective, the most successful salesperson is the one who doesn't spend any time explaining anything to anybody. There is a difference between me answering your questions about what's in the program and how it will change your life versus me trying to convince you to jump in. I don't have time for that. I wanna spend my time introducing it to people who are interested and then spending the time supporting the people that jump in. I want you to do that in your job search. And if you spend more time reaching out to new employers, this is going to be time well spent, far better and far more effective, which is why the job search challenge has gives you a quota each day as sending out three of these up here. Now, when it comes to the question that Venkata is asking me, why is this program going to be effective, is I will tell you this, and this is what I would say to your parents, and this is what I would say to any of you. School taught you how to do a trade. It didn't teach you anything about your career. It didn't teach you how to manage it. It de didn't teach you how to find one. You know absolutely zero about doing that. Mom and dad, I don't know anything about finding a job. I just studied cell biology and computer science. I know how to program computers, and I know chemistry, biology, organic chemistry, and so on and so forth. I have zero hours of experience finding a job. This guy has been doing it every day of his life for many years on many continents, all the inhabited ones. And all I need to do is follow the steps he tells me so that it will expedite my ability to get a job, start paying money and paying you rent or start gaining money and paying you rent. And that, that to me, I would, when I wanted to be a career coach in this capacity, I had already been working for a very long time. I was 50 years old. I had been working since I was 22 and I didn't know anything about doing this. So what did I do? I didn't try to figure it out on my own. I went and I spent two grand on somebody's instructional program so I could learn the basics that expedited my ability to do this, started me earning money faster doing this. That's what I'd say to mom and dad. I know, I know nothing about this. I know nothing. And wait, let's make it worse. I'm going to start going and talking to people who also know nothing. And they're going to give me bad advice. And it's going to take me longer. And then I'm going to have to fix everything. And then I'm going to join the program later. And that's going to elongate my ability to find a job. And so on and so forth. Don't you want me out of the house? That's what I would say. All right. I hope, I hope that helped you. And... Venkata, uh, how do I highlight my non-tech experience for tech companies without showing that I'll be leaving for med school in a couple of years? Okay, first thing, don't say anything about med school. Second thing is, you are a recent college graduate. Um, this, this does not apply to you. Uh, I have a collegiate resume template. This applies to you, except we don't call it a career profile. We call it a profile. Okay, you're a recent college graduate that graduated from, who studied what, and here's what you did during your college years or the research you did or whatever. I lay it all out for you. I actually even write samples for you. So go grab that one and you don't need to worry and you wanna go and I would, I would literally, I have coached so many recent college graduates who say to me, Andy, I went to one of the best schools, right? Ivy League this, Big Ten that, and they don't do anything in the way of helping us get a job after school. I'm like, forget it. Don't apply online. Don't do anything. We're going to boss hunt. We're going to do this and that because I guarantee you that there are going to be people that are out there that are going to want to give you a chance. The problem is you're not sending them messages. So, so that's what you need to be doing. All that stuff is in the program. All the templates for you are in the program. Stacy. I spent 20 years at one company and I feel like it's a total negative in today's market. That's not true. I consistently moved roles. That's awesome. But I feel like my resume screams old, not hireable. Stacy, I am here. Your beloved coach is here to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. It isn't about the number of companies you've seen. I love loyalty. Okay, nobody works 20 years for the same company anymore. 
what you need to show is evolution. So if you were promoted three to five years, you're going to have one company. It's going to say, right, 2003 to 2000, you know, current or 2023, if you just recently left. And then you're going to show me the evolution with the titles. And is what you did, three bullets, two, three bullets in each one of them. And let me see the evolution. And that I love. And it isn't about you not knowing anything in this world or seeing different things. If you've had new projects, new challenges, new assignments, you obviously were getting steadily promoted, right? If every three to five years you got a new role or you got a promotion or even if it's just a new role where you're moved over and you learn new things, that's cool. Get that out of your head. So so let me let me... Let me just throw a few things at you really quick. Everybody, just Stacy kind of made me springboard this. The reason a lot of you feel the way you feel, Stacy included, right? I feel unhirable or I feel old or I feel this and that is limited thinking. There are plenty of opportunities out there. There's 8 billion people in the world. There's loads of companies and many of them would fall all over themselves to hire you. Your issue isn't a marketability function. You're all marketable. It's the execution of marketing you to them. It's the consistency in which you market them to you. So I built a program and we launched it in 2016 and like 50 people bought it. And I'm thinking, geez, should I lower the price? Only 50 people bought it. Maybe nobody likes the name. Maybe my product sucks. No, what sucked? My marketing, right? It wasn't the product that stunk. It was the marketing of my product that stunk. And actually it was probably even good for a first time, 50 people bought it, right? It's, it's perspective. So you, it, isn't, it isn't that you all don't have skills. It, it, even recent college graduates, and Venkata included, and anybody else who's getting out of school, anybody who's been working for two years as a tech person or a coder or a lawyer or whatever, you all have marketable skills. It's the way in which you market them. The first thing I'm doing is I'm not going back. I'm not going back to school. I'm not going to take certifications. I'm not doing anything that's going to detract my time from spending it on marketing. You need to be spending 90% of what you do feeding the top of the funnel. This is the funnel that I endearingly refer to it. I even have, I even have a... I even have a funnel picture you can, you can buy on the YouTube channel if you want. And you need to spend more time obsessing over how do I market me better? You are all purely whole. You do not need to change yourself. The only exception would be if you drastic want to make a drastic career change, then yes, start educating yourself about how to do what you want to do and all that good stuff. Start rubbing elbows with people and network. But I'm telling you that 90% of you that are watching me, you go on and on about this stuff right now. You don't need to change a thing except the marketing of you. That's your resume. That's your cover letter messages or emails or cover letters, okay? And it's the execution of this and circulating that. That's what you need to change. Then if you're getting interviews but you're not getting job offers, you need to change your what? Storytelling tactics. That's marketing you. How you win the job interview is predicated on how you tell the stories about how you did what you did and the value you created. Not what you did, how you did it, how you added value, what happened right? There's tricks to that too. You're all perfect the way you are. It's true. Your marketing of you might stink. My marketing stunk, right? Until I had to learn it. I spend 90% of my day marketing, right? That's, what, that's how you need to think about yourself. Isa, career pivot from mortgage ops to banking compliance, no direct experience. What do I put in career highlights? What does banking compliance do skill-wise that you've attained in mortgage ops? I don't know what those are. I don't know what the transferable skills are. If banking compliance is about evaluating whether organizations are doing certain things in order to ensure compliance with, or if it's banking compliance as it relates to what? Government adherence or other financial regulations or things of that nature. Are you right putting processes together that ensure compliance? So if you're in mortgage ops, are you is it a situation where you're making sure that everything is streamlined? One thing you can do, Isa, you can go like this this is something that I am going to teach you how to do. Uh, but if you went into chat GPT 
and you said, I'm in mortgage operations. Here are, take your resume, paste it in a JAT TPT. Here's my background. Boom. I want to switch to banking compliance that does these kinds of things. What on my resume will is the most transferable skills to advertise me and improve my candidacy? Boom. If you got a job description for banking compliance, you throw that in. I mean, I've been. I, this is what I've been doing with ChatGPT for the last two weeks. It works. That works. That's how I would be using ChatGPT, and that's going to surface. It's it's remarkably good. Don't say how do I write a resume bullet. That's you can write a better resume bullet once you know how to do it. So give that a, give that a whirl. Nana, Nana, how does one write a career profile for a career change? Actually, to springboard off what e, what Issa just asked me. You are looking for the transferable skills that you have to talk about the areas that actually port from where you are to where you want to go. I can't tell you exactly what those are unless I know I'm one of these and I've done all this and I want to do this. Then you would look and you would try to match that. Some people are going from sales to marketing or vice versa. Some people are going from engineering to product management. There's going to be a different array of skill sets that are going to be going to be appropriate. Some people are going from marketing to accounting. I mean, that's very, they're very different. It's going to be a bigger challenge. All right, listen, folks, I hate to cut you short. I got, I got to get rolling because I got, a, I got an afternoon of coaching sessions that I got to do. Interview intervention mini camp next week. It's going to be awesome. It's like, it's like eight hours of stuff in three days. Register free July 10th, Monday night. The workbook comes out. And then we're live Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the 11th, 12th, and 13th at 10.30. Then the following week, and by the way, if you're a member of my job search coaching program, we'll give your, you will give your questions priority next week because there's going to be healthy Q&As every day. And then the following week is for premium members only, members of my job search coaching program. I call them boot campers. They're going to join me for the resume writing workshop. I'm going to go through everything like I showed you earlier uh, on that page, you can check that out if you want to see what that bonus entails. But get into the job search coaching program now. You can go through it. You'll be so much smarter. The following week, I got a leadership session on diversity. So uh, so we got a lot of really fun things coming. I'm glad you're a part of it. I'm glad so many of you showed up on this holiday week. Uh, but I just, you know, I just felt like I needed to spend some time with you. And I wanted to get in the spirit of interviewing and resume writing. All right. I'll see you. Lots going on. Two back-to-back three-day workshops next two weeks. Hope you all can make it. You got any questions, support at malwalk.com. You know I love you all. Be good. Be safe. Happy job hunting. Lots of luck.